This is Echo 3, and let's discuss Kraken Drives and the Breaking Ground DLC. In this video, we will look at three different styles of Kraken Drives. The first one uses the landing gear, the second one uses the zombie docking port style Kraken Drive, and the last one uses an exploit with the Cal 1000 where we can overclock the engines. The first thing we are going to work on is a variation of the landing gear style Kraken Drive. Now I am going to be making use of the engine plates from the Making History DLC. These are not necessary, but I found them very useful, specifically because of the attachment nodes that they have, and I can get some very secure connections between my parts. And with Kraken Drives, secure connections is a very useful thing to take advantage of. Once I have these down, I'm going to put a piston down, and this is what's going to help give us our force. I am putting a grip pad on top of the piston. This will be what the landing gear will press against and this will help generate the force. It will need to be set to same vessel interaction in order for this drive to work. Now we're going to put on our landing gear. Again, these will be set to same vessel interaction. And because of that, they will need to be spaced so that they aren't touching each other. If they are touching each other, you're going to get some really weird interaction between the gear themselves, and that will cause some unusual forces and make this craft even harder to control. So I'm being very careful that they'll be close, but not actually touching. Make sure that the spring strength is set to maximum and that the dampening is also set to maximum. That will get us the most force out of this drive. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and strut basically everything together. Kraken drives can be just tricky in general, and this one is one of the trickiest as far as control. So I'm going to strut everything together and make sure I have some really secure connections so things don't fall apart. I'm even going to go ahead and strut the piston itself, just the bottom of it, not the top or the grip pad, because if I do that, then nothing will work because it won't move. The piston, I'm going to go ahead and see how far I want it to move. I don't want it to go too far. If I do that, it will actually get caught up in the gear and things won't work or something will break and then all of a sudden I will have lost all of my thrust and then nothing will work right. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a limit for how far I want that to be able to deploy. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some power. The piston will be under power almost the entire time as long as the drive is in use. Because of the resistance from the landing gear, the piston will need to be able to have some push back up against it and so if it loses power it will lock up and then you will not be able to use the drive anymore. The last thing with the piston itself is to bind its deployment angle to the main throttle. That will mean this craft can then be controlled with just the regular throttle and it will be pretty easy to use. Lastly I'm going to go ahead and remove from staging these engine plates that way I won't have to worry about accidentally deploying them. Now everything on this engine is set. So I can go ahead and do something kind of fun. I'm going to save this as a sub-assembly. The sub-assembly menu is under the advanced construction tab there up at the top. By saving this as a sub-assembly, I can then use it later on a future craft. This is just a saved engine. With our Kraken drive saved, I can go ahead and drag it off of the screen and start constructing a craft in order to test it. So let's go out and throw on a probe core. We'll use this big one down at the bottom. It's the same size diameter as the Kraken drive that we made, so it'll work pretty well. Let's throw on some reaction wheels. And with a craft like this, more reaction wheels, the better because of the weird forces that the way this Kraken drive works. Throw on a nose cone because we are going to ascend through the atmosphere. I can go over to the sub-assembly tab here and put on our drive. Like any normal engine, I can just attach it to our craft. And then we are gonna ascend through the atmosphere. Let's throw on a few control surfaces that will help with that. Once we're in space, this won't be needed, but it just will help with the ascent a little bit. And that's pretty much it. We have a working craft that we can fly somewhat like normal. Throttle up and we are going up. The forces on this particular Kraken drive are not consistent. As we get higher up in the atmosphere, we'll notice that our force actually increases for the same amount of throttle. It is not the easiest craft to control, but it does work, especially once we get out of the atmosphere, we'll notice that this craft will behave a little bit more consistently. Once I then get up out of the atmosphere, we'll be able to create a maneuver node and put this thing into orbit like any other craft. While the maneuver nodes won't be able to give me an exact burn time because there's no actual burn going on, it does function fairly consistently then in orbit and we're able to control this craft pretty well. The next thing we're going to work on is a variation of the Zompy Docking Port Kraken Drive. I am going to be using the engine plates from the Making History DLC, not needed, just very useful with all of their attachment points and their secure connections between each other. Now we need some docking ports. 
I'm going to be using the junior docking ports. They all have the same acquire force, just the junior ones are lighter, and so that makes more sense to have less mass for our craft. Now I'm going to be doing a little trick here to get 64 way symmetry out of these cubic struts. And I have a video on that called The Secrets of Symmetry if you want to see more about different symmetry modes and what you can do out of that. Then I'm going to take a docking port and hover over one of the cubic struts in order to get 64 way symmetry out of the docking port and then I can have 64 docking ports on the bottom as opposed to just one and that will increase the amount of force I'm able to get out of this drive. I'm going to use the absolute move tool that's the F key so that I can get my parts in the exact center of this craft so that my force is then centered with the center of mass. Set the bottom docking ports to have a acquire force of 200% that will be needed to make this work. Now I'm going to use a piston and put it on the top and I think a small piston will actually work just fine for us. I want to make sure that the space between the top and bottom docking ports is going to be correct. I want them to get close but not actually touch so I'm doing a little testing here. I will need to move my bottom piece down and now I'm a little too far away so I'm going to move it up a little bit. That should get us about what we need. Also make sure that you set the acquire force on the top docking port to zero and then the different acquire forces between the two docking ports is what actually makes this whole craft work. With the docking ports and the space between them set correctly, I'm going to bind the target extension of the piston to the main throttle. So like the first craft, I'll be able to just use the main throttle to control the acceleration rate of the craft. And like the first craft, I'm going to save this one as a sub-assembly. Because we have a free attachment node on our root part, which is the top engine plate, this will then be able to attach like a normal engine on any future craft. Very helpful feature in the game then. So I'm going to create a craft for testing. We'll use a probe core like the first one, only we'll use one that is the same size as our engine. Throw on a reaction wheel. The reaction wheel will help with control, although this style of craft tends to be a little bit more stable than the first one. Throw on a nose cone because we are going to send through the atmosphere, then attach our drive section like we would any kind of engine. And I did not include any kind of power generation like I did with the first one, so I'm going to throw on four RTGs. This craft will not have near the power needs that the first one did. It's just one small piston and it will not be under the same constant force that the other one is. So this is definitely overkill as far as power needs. A few solar panels would have been sufficient, although this is a sandbox game, so I decided to go overboard on my RTGs because funds are just a number. With that, let's go ahead and throw on a few aerodynamic control surfaces because we are going to ascend through the atmosphere and this will help. Your center of aerodynamic pressure and your center of mass are still things you have to take into account like any other craft. And you can even use this for airplanes if you want as well, although they can easily become space planes with this drive. As you can see, this will have a very strong amount of thrust, especially with 64 docking ports on the bottom of this. I'm creating a little bit of a stand to launch off of, and that should be pretty much all we need to do. Let's go ahead and take this thing out for a little bit of a test run and see what it can do. Go ahead and throttle up and we are accelerating very quickly. A little loss of control there and that's more with the aerodynamics, not with the instability of the drive itself. I just have to be careful with this like any normal launch. And you can see we are accelerating very quickly through the atmosphere and we'll be able to put this thing into orbit without any issues. And our final style of crack and drive is going to use a Cal 1000 exploit. Again, I am using the engine plate from the Making History DLC just as an attachment point, not as anything you actually have to use to make this work. I'm using the Vector engine. Any engine will work for this. The Vector engine is just very powerful and a fun one to use. For this top one, I am turning off gimbal and I'm setting the throttle to be independent. So I'm not gonna be using the main throttle to directly control the engine. We need just one fuel tank with the appropriate fuels in it. In our case, liquid fuel and oxidizer and a second engine. It helps if it's the same style as the first engine. It will also be set to independent throttle. Make sure that you have advanced tweakables in your settings enabled because some of these 
settings might not be available without that turned on. Now we need a Cal 1000, and this is where the real magic is going to happen with this special piece. The Cal 1000 is going to be bound to the main throttle for the craft. So we will have throttle controls like normal, but everything's going to be run through the Cal 1000. I need a rotor piece, and this is how I exploit the Cal 1000. So I'm going to bind the rotor RPMs to the Cal 1000, and then I bind the thrust and throttle of both the top and bottom engine to the Cal 1000. Now we open up the Cal 1000 and we're going to edit what goes on there. First thing, I take the rotor and I'm going to set its values at 460 RPMs. Then I can copy these values over to the throttle of the top engine and then I will reverse it so that it becomes a negative value. So this top engine gets a negative throttle. And it, the way it works is it sets it to negative 360 as opposed to negative 460. Doesn't really matter too much. That's still going to be pretty ridiculous. I'm going to copy that 460 value to the thrust and keep it at 460 on the thrust, but the throttle will be negative. Now I need to take the RPMs and I'm going to change them just a little bit. I'm going to drop it down to 300. What this will end up doing, because this number is less, it will be that the engine will create more fuel than it uses. So that'll be very useful for us. We won't ever have to worry about running out of fuel. So the thrust on the second engine will be set to just 300%. This is still really ridiculous. We're going to have 300% thrust. Now for the throttle, I'm going to set the RPM values from 0 to 300 and copy and paste that down to the throttle controls of the second engine. So now our engine will have 300% thrust and be able to go from 0 to 300% on the throttle. The top engine really won't do anything, but it will create fuel for the craft and it will create fuel faster than the bottom engine is going to use it. Now you could use an exploit like this and not generate fuel if I just had the lower engine set up like this and it would then use fuel very quickly with a very high thrust output. But the way this is set up, I have infinite fuel. Now, like the other crafts, I'm going to copy this over to the subassembly and this is something I can save and just attach to any craft that I want in the future. And I have a very powerful engine that doesn't run out of fuel, a type of crack and drive that I can then exploit for the game. Let's go ahead and test this like we did with the other ones. We need to put on some kind of probe core. We'll use this smaller one. This will need probably a little bit with reaction wheels. This does have a lot of thrust that it will be able to generate. Although this engine has some vectoring, so it'll be a little bit more controllable. We'll throw on a battery. Because these engines can generate their own electricity, they have a generator in them, it will be a little easier as far as dealing with electricity and managing that. You could throw on a few solar panels if you want, just not something you have to do, especially if you're running a crewed mission. We're going to send through the atmosphere, throw on a few aerodynamic control surfaces, and we are set to go. I think this craft is going to be way overpowered. We have a very small craft and a very powerful engine set to 300% thrust and throttle. So this is our overclock exploit with the Cal 1000 infinite fuel, infinite range, ridiculous thrust, pretty fun crack and drive to use, really feels like cheating. Okay, it is probably by many opinions cheating, but definitely a fun craft to use. And you can see that this thing just accelerates like nothing else. Maneuver nodes work very well with this because you have fuel and an engine, the game does know what to do with it. I have used this before and with just one week of in-game time, I went from the surface of EVE back to Kerbin. So this has ridiculous thrust. Fun. Use it as you see fit. Recently I made a science fiction inspired spaceship with the zombie docking port Kraken Drive in it. The Kraken Drive does need to be in line with the center of mass of the ship, but it did work out really well for me and was kind of fun to make and fly. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about Kraken Drives. I will see you next time.